Bonjour! Welcome to another episode of Cuisine de Michel. I am Michel. So tonight I'm going to be making a recipe that I've made a few times before. It's one of our favorites here in our house. This are, these are going to be stuffed shells with Italian sausage. The original recipe is from johnsonville.com, the people who make the sausages. And of course, I'm going to be using their sausage. For this, you could use whatever sausage you prefer. Because it's not like I'm sponsored by them or anything. But hey, if anybody ever wants to, they're totally welcome to. Anyway, to start out, I've got some water that's boiling on the stove because we're going to be cooking our shells. Now, you could use just regular jumbo pasta shells. I have some special ones here that I bought. Uh, well, quite some time ago actually, and I can't find them in my store anymore, but they're actually a really cool shape. They're kind of like, they're a shell, but it's almost like they're little baskets, so it's kind of fun. Uh, anyway, I'm going to be cooking these uh, according to the package directions, so whatever your package says, um, you can cook it to maybe one minute less than what it says for al dente, because they are going to get a little bit cooked in your sauce as well. So. We're letting that uh, get ready to cook there. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to be preparing the sausage part. So I'm gonna turn my burner on to medium. It's about medium. And I've got two links of hot Italian sausage. Now, if you don't want spicy, you could probably do this without spicy sausage, but I think it tastes really great with the spice, so I recommend it if you do enjoy spicy. We're gonna remove the casings, put that in there. And then we're gonna be crumbling those up as we cook it until it is done. All right, so once your sausage is finished cooking, you're gonna remove it from heat and set it aside to cool. So you can just leave it in the pan to cool. It doesn't have to be super cool, just cooling enough over here. Meanwhile, heat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I've got an eight by eight glass dish here. You can also use ceramic. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, put some olive oil on a paper towel and kind of rub that all over in the dish just to make sure that it's not gonna stick real bad in here. I think you probably don't have to do this, but the recipe said to, so that's what I do. Again, you don't want this to be super oily or anything, just a, a nice coating with the uh, paper towel will do. All right. Once you've got that, you're gonna take a jar of pasta, and I say a jar, a 28 ounce jar of pasta sauce. You can choose whatever pasta sauce you want. This is just one that we really, really like. This is Mids Three Cheese. I've done it with several different types. It really doesn't matter as long as you're picking a sauce that you like. So we're gonna put about half of this in the bottom of here. It does not have to be exactly half, just enough to kind of make a layer on the bottom of there. I think about half. That's about right. And then, uh, it says it's spread evenly, you can just kind of <laughs> shake it, it'll spread evenly, and then you can set that aside. Next, in a large bowl, you're going to want to have one large egg, and you're going to beat that egg. You don't have to beat it too much. It doesn't have to be severely beaten or anything. Just enough to kind of make that consistency like you see there. Then to that, we are going to add seven and a half ounces of ricotta cheese. You can choose whatever kind you want for that. I'm using a whole milk ricotta. Some scraping noise there. And 
And then to that, we're going to be adding two tablespoons of fresh basil. You could also put in a half, tea, uh, half tablespoon of dried basil if you wanted to, or just as much basil as you like, because I'm a big basil fan, so I found that this is the right amount for us. And then one quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. I usually use a coarse ground. That's just my personal preference. You could use regular if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and stir those together to start with. And then to that mixture, I'm going to be adding my cooked sausage. Whoa, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Those things happen when we're cooking, right? <laughs> like I said, I, I'm not some kind of professional show here. I just do what I do. And we combine that into there. To this mixture, we're going to be adding a six cheese Italian blend from Sargento. You can use any other just Italian blend cheese. So there's different ones available. Like I've used Kraft's version. I'm not brand particular about this, although Sargento is one of my very favorites. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be a bit of a mess here, but <laughs> we're going to get it to come together. So once your shells have cooked and drained, and then I suggest rinsing them in some cold water so that you do not have hot hands trying to do this, you're going to want to stuff those shells as best that you can with this mixture. So yeah, you got to get your hands dirty here. That's part of the game. That's why I love these little shells because they're so cute, the little basket shape like this. And they stuff so nicely, see? But once we have them stuffed, then we're going to put them in here as best we can to arrange them until you run out of mixture or shells, one of the two. Okay, so now I have stuffed all the shells. And so the next step is to top it with your remaining sauce. And depending on what you're using, and you may not need to use every single ounce of sauce. All right, so after you've topped this with the remaining sauce, I kind of spread it just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the next part is to put, it says a half cup more of the cheese. Just I just put it on until I have just kind of a nice layer here, so I don't really measure this part. And it, of course, if you can avoid it. Of course, you could put as much topping cheese on here as you really want. These are already pretty cheesy, but they are delicious once we have this too. After you get that all topped, we're going to put aluminum foil over it and transfer it to the oven. And we're going to bake it for 45 minutes with the foil on it. And then you're going to remove that foil and bake it for an additional five minutes. All right, so I've just taken these out of the oven. Uh, you can see it's kind of bubbling still yet, just for a moment. And because it's still bubbling, you want to let this rest for just a few minutes before actually serving it. And I decided to try a little experiment this time. I reduced my baking time to 40 minutes for the regular part and then, of course, five without the 
uh, aluminum foil on it. So we're going to see. I think that should probably be sufficient, but we'll see in just a moment when I plate this. Okay, so here is my final plating. I decided to sprinkle some extra basil that I had chopped up to, over the top just to make it pretty. You do not have to do that by any means because it's still steaming despite waiting a couple minutes. So it does serve very, very hot and it stays hot like most baked pastas do. So anyway, I hope that you will make this and enjoy it. So please be sure to join me again. Thank you for joining me today, but join me again, please. Come back and join me for another episode of Cuisine de Michel. And while you're at it, please like this video and share it with other people. Subscribe, most importantly, and make a comment. Let me know if you make it, what you think of it, and we'll see you on the next episode. Au revoir.